One simply cannot discuss popular culture without the existence of witches. From the first appearance in the Bible, to the Wizard of Oz, and every Halloween, they're a classic monster to avoid, or a being to worship, depending on one's view. While witches may no longer resemble common stereotypes, the art of Wicca is still a very common practice to this day in many areas around the world. I'm your host, Alexa, and welcome to Top 5 Scary Real Witches in History You Pray You Don't Meet. Kicking us off in fifth place, we have Tituba, one of the first women to be accused of witchcraft during the Salem Witch Trials of 1692-93. to It is believed that she was taken from her tribe and forced into slavery in Barbados, where she learned her skills in witchcraft from mistresses and other slaves. When the head of her plantation passed, she was inherited by Minister Samuel Paris and was then brought to Salem, Massachusetts. Tituba was accused of practicing witchcraft by a young woman, Abigail Williams and Elizabeth Paris who also happened to be the daughter of her owner. The girls had been showing signs of being bewitched, and it was believed that Tituba told the girls tales of voodoo and witchcraft prior to said accusations. A neighbor of the Paris family, Mary Sibley, recommended a witch's cake be baked to reveal the names of the witches, and instructed Tituba to bake a rye cake with the victim's urine and feed the cake to a dog. Dogs were believed to support witches and their supernatural powers by following the witch's requests. When the symptoms shown by the young woman did not pass, this was shown as evidence that Tatupa possessed the powers of witchcraft. She was allowed to speak in court, becoming the first person to confess to practicing witchcraft in Salem in March of 1962. She also confessed to speaking with the devil, stating that he ordered her to worship him and hurt the children of the village, along with discussing tales of black dogs, hogs, a yellow bird, red and black rats, cats, a fox, and a wolf that she had cursed. She was sent to jail in Boston to await trial and punishment on March 7th, eventually stuck in jail until being sold to an unknown person for the price of her jail fees that Samuel had refused to pay. Coming in fourth, Mole Dyer, one of the witches that inspired the Blair Witch Project. Residing in Leonardtown, Maryland, her origins are clouded in mystery, the most popular theory being that she was a noblewoman escaping an unsavory past. Taking up an isolated residence outside of town limits, she developed a reputation as a skilled herbalist. Those skills, combined with her unknown past and secluded lifestyle, planted the suspicion of witchcraft in villagers' heads. In the winter of 1697, the weather was so harsh that many crops failed and a deadly plague swept through the town. It is believed that these were revenge from Maul, after the townspeople had been blaming her for every misfortune and hardship they faced. A meeting was held amongst town vigilantes, and they decided to form a mob to run her out of town. They set fire to her cottage in the dark of night, and Maul ran until her legs gave out, kneeling by a large rock. She raised her hand to the sky, calling down a further curse to the townspeople, and eventually froze to that same rock leaving her handprint as a notice of her final act. The boulder has since been preserved as a landmark, and even though the handprint is no longer clearly visible, visitors have reported feeling profoundly uncomfortable or experiencing terrible aches and pains around it, and cameras have been known to malfunction in its presence. On the coldest nights of the year, People have reported seeing a woman with long white hair and wearing a white dress walking through the fields and woods near the town. Third place, Ray Sherwood, the last convicted witch of Virginia. Also known as the Witch of Pungo, she was born in 1660 to carpenter John White and his wife Susan and married her husband, farmer James Sherwood, in 1680, whom she birthed three sons with. Grace was a renowned healer, growing her own herbs on their land, also acting as a midwife. While no official paintings or drawings of her exist, she is described as very attractive and tall, with a sense of humor. She was known to wear trousers instead of dresses while doing yard work, something almost unheard of at the time. The first accusation of wrongdoing against her came in 1697, when Richard Capps accused her of using a spell to end the life of his bull, of which the court could not make a decision. Grace and her husband filed a countersuit which was settled out of court. In 1698, Grace was then accused by neighbor John Gisburn of enchanting his pigs in cotton crop. No court action was taken this time, and another countersuit by the Sherwoods went nowhere. In that same year, Elizabeth Barnes alleged that Grace had taken the form of a black cat, entered the Barnes's home, jumped over her bed, whipped her, and left through the keyhole. The allegations went nowhere. Same for the countersuit, leaving the Sherwood couple to pay court fees for the third time. After her husband's death in 1701, Grace managed to dodge further allegations until 1705 when she got into a fight with neighbor Elizabeth Hill. She sued Elizabeth and her husband for a... 
battery and was awarded damages of 20 shillings, so roughly the equivalent to 170 Canadian dollars today. In March, the Princess Anne County Justices assembled two juries, both made up of women, with the first being ordered to search Elizabeth's home for wax or baked items that might indicate she was a witch. Led by Elizabeth Hill herself, Grace was examined by the second jury of 12 ancient and knowing women, appointed to look for markings on her body that might be brands of the devil. And they discovered two marks not like theirs or like those of any other woman known to them. On July 5th, the justices ordered a trial by ducking to take place. If Grace were to sink, she would be deemed innocent. If she were to float and survive, she would be declared as guilty and imprisoned. Around 10 a.m. on July 10th, she was taken down a dirt lane now known as Witch Duck Road to a plantation near the mouth of the Lynn Haven River. The event attracted people from all over the colony, who began to shout, Duck the Witch! It is believed that her right thumb was bound to her left big toe and her left thumb to her right big toe, and then she was flung into the water where she quickly floated to the surface. The sheriff then tied a 13-pound Bible around her neck, causing her to sink, but she untied herself and returned to the surface, cementing her status as a witch. She was then imprisoned for eight years and lived quietly until her death in 1740. According to legend, her sons placed her body near the fireplace and a wind came down the chimney, with her corpse disappearing amongst the embers. The only clue left behind was a cloven hoof print. Stories about the devil taking her body, unnatural storms, and loitering black cats quickly arose after her death, and local men ended the life of every feline they could find. This widespread elimination of cats is believed to have caused the infestation of rats and mice in 1743. In our second place position, we're traveling over to 1662 Scotland, where Isabel Gowdy, housewife to John Gilbert, residents of the Aldern region, and that's about all we know of her personal life. <laughs> it is believed that she was tortured before her confession. Methods used at the time included the use of thumb screws, foot roasting, witch pricking to test for a devil's mark, sleep deprivation, or isolation with food and water restrictions. Ugh. The specific details of the original accusation or reason for her confession are unknown, but are believed to be part of a conspiracy to torment the local minister, Harry Forbes, who was a zealous extremist who had a fear of witchcraft. And for a woman who would not have been taught to read or write, she was extremely eloquent. Her first confession described an encounter with the devil in the church at night, where she renounced her baptism and the devil put his mark on her shoulder before sucking her blood from it. Other meetings took place at several locations, where she recounted having sexual intercourse with the devil, who she described as a very cold and rough but great man. She detailed his appearance as having forked and cloven feet that were sometimes covered with shoes or boots. Details were given of taking a child's body from a grave and spoiling crops, along with information about covens and where they danced. The coven ate and drank the best of food at houses they reached by flying through the air on magical horses and entered through the windows, where they were entertained by the Queen of the Fairies in her home at Downy Hill, which was filled with water bowls that frightened Isabel. She claimed to have made clay figures of the male offspring of the owner of her land to cause them suffering or death, and that she had assumed the form of a jackdaw bird with other members of the coven who had transformed into animals like cats and hares. Some parts of her testimony, such as her description of the King and Queen of the Fairies, has been cut short when the notaries have just noted, etc because they were unable to keep pace with the volume of information being narrated to them. A little over two weeks later, on May 3rd, Isabel's second confession was transcribed. She expanded on details about the coven by providing the nicknames of its members and as many of the spirits that waited on them as she could remember, including her own servant spirit, whom she called Red River, who dressed all in black. Claims included once again having the ability to transform into animals with the individual chance used supplied. Over the duration of all of her confessions, a total of 27 benevolent or malevolent chance were given, more than in any other British witchcraft case. She testified that the devil handmade elf arrows that were then enhanced by small, roughly spoken elf boys. The devil allocated a number of arrows to each coven member with instructions that they were to be fired in his name. If the intended target, human or animal, was touched by the arrow, she claimed that they would pass, even if wearing protective armor. Spells used to inflict illness and torment on local minister Harry Forbes were also described. On May 15th, Isabel was brought before her interrogators for a third time. Same as her first two confessions, the transcript begins by detailing her pact with the devil. Taking the information she provided previously about the elf arrows a step further, she revealed the names of those whose lives she had ended, along with supplying names of other coven members with details of 
who they had unalived. She described an instance where the devil had sent her to run an errand disguised as a hare, and how well in that form she was chased by a pack of dogs until she was able to utter the chant to transform herself back into a human. She mentioned that while dogs could not kill her in that disguise, any marks sustained would still show after returning to human form. Descriptions of dining with the devil, along with salacious details concerning sexual relations with said devil, and broad characteristics of his yeah, were chronicled. The fourth and final confession on May 27th was mainly to confirm the three previous testimonies and an attempt to elicit more information about the members of the coven. After the six weeks that it took to record her testimonies, the panel of interrogators believed they had enough proof to request a trial from the Privy Council, which was granted. While there is no official record of the exact trial outcome, it is believed that Isabel would have been found guilty and following the verdict would have been transported by cart to Gallow Hill, where she would have been subject to a public strangulation and burning. The the posthumous burning to ensure that she couldn't haunt the community from beyond her grave. Granted, locals to the area claim that she is the green lady that can be seen haunting them to this day. Finally, in first place, we have the only male witch on this list, Grigory Rasputin, close family friend of the last royal Russian family. He was originally introduced to them as a faith healer who could aid their only son, Alexei, who suffered from hemophilia. A self-described mystic and holy man, he was a figure of much debate amongst the royal court, with some describing him as a visionary and prophet, others as a charlatan and scam artist. Historians believe that his scandalous reputation and influence over the Romanovs helped to discredit and overthrow the family. Having taken many pilgrimages to holy monasteries, he developed a reputation as a reverend holy man, gaining a small circle of followers who believed in his miracles, and began leading private prayer meetings, much to the scorn and suspicion of villagers and priests. It was rumored that female followers were ceremonially washing him before each meeting, that the group sang strange songs, and even that they had joined a religious sect whose rituals were rumored to include self-flagellation and sexual orgies. Word of Rasputin's activity and charisma began to spread in Siberia during the early 1900s, where he developed many friendships with high-ranking religious leaders, eventually leading to his introduction to the royal family. It's not certain when Rasputin first acted as Alexei's healer, with the earliest record on date being when he was summoned by Alexandra to pray for Alexei when he had an internal hemorrhage in the spring of 1907, with the young royal healing by the next morning. Due to his closeness with the family, Family, Rasputin was allowed intimate access in situations that governesses to the children described as inappropriate. One governess in particular was released from her position simply for voicing her concerns about Rasputin being allowed around the children while they were clad in nothing but their nightgown. Another of the nursery governesses claimed in the spring of 1910 that she was seduced into sexual acts against her will by Rasputin, having originally been a devotee of him but was later disillusioned. The Empress refused to believe her and said that everything Rasputin does is holy, later dismissing the governess. It was whispered in society that Rasputin had seduced not only the Tsarina, but also the four young grand duchesses. Rasputin had released passionate letters written to him by the Tsarina and the four young grand duchesses that throughout society fueled the rumors. In 1916, a group of nobles led by Prince Felix Yusupov banded together, deciding to assess the holy man for his influence over Alexandria and her family. It is said that the prince invited Rasputin to his place shortly after midnight, where he offered the man tea and cakes, which had been laced with cyanide. Rasputin initially refused the cakes, but then began to eat them, and to Felix's surprise, appeared unaffected by the poison. Rasputin then asked for wine, which had also been poisoned, and drank three glasses, but still showed no sign of distress. At around 2.30 in the morning, Felix excused himself to go upstairs, where his fellow conspirators were waiting. He grabbed a revolver and returned to the basement, telling Rasputin that he'd better look at the crucifix and say a prayer, referring to the crucifix in the room, and then shot him once in the chest. Rasputin leapt up from the bullet and attacked Felix, who freed himself with some effort and fled upstairs. Rasputin then followed Felix outdoors, where he was shot once again and collapsed into a snowbank. The group of men then wrapped his body in cloth, drove it to the Petrovsky Bridge, and dropped it into the Malaya Nevka River. And that brings us to the end of our list and the beginning of my nightmares tonight. Respectfully, I'm glad most of the folks I've met that practice Wicca are extremely kind and helpful in their practice. What do y'all think? Let me know in the comments below if I missed any real witches that might be more terrifying. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you aren't already, and hit the bell for more scary content from us here at Top 5 Scary Videos.